it's quite likely that you have metabolic syndrome and you're not even aware of it. Millions of people around the globe actually have metabolic syndrome, but their doctor is either unaware that such a thing exists or they just haven't done the diagnostic test to know if you actually have metabolic syndrome or not. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. In this video, I'm gonna go through how you diagnose metabolic syndrome, just in case your doctor doesn't know. I'm gonna tell you why it's a big deal if you do have metabolic syndrome. Then at the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you how you can begin to reverse your metabolic syndrome and keep it gone forever. Now, first and foremost, how is metabolic syndrome diagnosed? So there are five diagnostic criteria, and the current way of doing this is, is if you have three or more of these diagnostic criteria, then you have a diagnosis of metabolic syndrome. So the five criteria are abdominal obesity, and we, do, we, we calculate this by measuring you around the biggest part of your abdomen. For men, if you have a waist circumference above 102 centimeters or 40 inches, women above 88 centimeters or 35 inches. Now, obviously this is not exact. If you're a very tall woman or a very short man, this might give you a little bit of an inaccurate picture, but overall, this is a very good diagnostic criteria. Number two is if your triglycerides are higher than 150 milligrams per deciliter, or with the other measurement system for our friends uh, on the other side of the pond, 1.7 millimolars. If your HDL cholesterol as a man is less than 40, or as a woman, less than 50. That's one of the diagnostic criteria. If your blood pressure, your resting, calm, relaxed blood pressure, not your blood pressure when you hurriedly rush into your doctor's office, a calm, relaxed blood pressure that's routinely above 130 over 85, that meets one of the criteria. And then finally, a fasting glucose above 100 milligrams per deciliter when you've been fasting for 12 to 14 hours. Uh, or across the pond, it would be 5.6 millimolar molar per liter. And if you have any three of these, and some of these you can check at home. Some you're gonna have to go see your doctor or you're gonna have to use one of the lab services where you can, you can have your lab work done online. I would opine we need to add two tests to this menu. I think that if you have an elevated fasting insulin level, uh, or elevated C-peptide level. That is an absolute marker for metabolic syndrome. And if you have an elevated ferritin level, a lot of doctors think that a high ferritin level means you've got iron overload. Nothing could be further from the truth. A elevated ferritin level can absolutely be a marker for metabolic syndrome. Now, why does it matter? So having metabolic syndrome and having it for months and months or years and years can actually increase your risk of multiple bad things happening to you. That's why you should care. So if you have metabolic syndrome and you're, you don't know how to reverse it and your doctor doesn't know it's a thing and doesn't know how to help you reverse it, it's, this increases your risk for a host of neurological disorders, including Alzheimer's dementia. It increases your risk of type 2 diabetes and all the disastrous complications that come with type 2 diabetes like blindness, impotence, kidney failure, amputations. It also increases your risk of PCOS, uh, which in women can cause an inability to get pregnant and a whole host of other um, unseemly side effects uh, or effects. You can also develop liver disease like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. It increases your risk of having a stroke, both an ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke. It increases your risk of cardiovascular disease like heart attack, arterial blockage, and heart failure. And ultimately, it decreases your quality of life and increases the risk that you're just gonna die from any of these causes or a whole host of other causes. So metabolic syndrome basically makes you live a crappy life and die prematurely. So sounds like something you'd really like to, first of all, be diagnosed with. Secondly, reverse it and keep it going for the rest of your life. So let's talk about how to reverse metabolic syndrome. So in a nutshell, what metabolic syndrome winds up being is chronic hyperinsulinemia and chronic inappropriate inflammation. Those two things, which are both caused by eating an improper diet, 
that's what leads to metabolic syndrome. And you saw from the earlier graphic, metabolic syndrome leads to lots of yucky stuff and a, and a, and a much lower quality of life and an early termination of your life. So let's talk about how to reverse it. You can do it in, with five easy steps and you can start to reverse it within six weeks. You can already see noticeable improvements in the marker. So here are the five steps you can use starting right now today with your very next meal. You can start to reverse metabolic syndrome. So number one is to remove all sugar from your diet. Definitely any added sugar, highly processed foods that have sugar as one of the first 10 ingredients on the ingredient panel. Keep in mind, food manufacturers love to call sugar by other names. I've got another uh, video on this channel about all the different names that big food manufacturers like Kellogg's and Kraft Heinz and Mondelez love to use instead of just saying, hey, this is full of sugar, they try to call sugar a hundred different things. So all the sugars, and this includes fruit juices. Fruit juices are very high in sugar. In many cases, fruit juices have more sugar than Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Yeah, look it up, it's true. You wanna remove all the added sugars and, and even a lot of the naturally occurring sugars from your diet. This is immediately gonna to start to lower your blood sugar, which is one of the markers. It's also gonna to start to immediately lower your triglycerides, another one of the markers. Step number two is to remove all grains from your diet. Wheat, rice, oats, corn, none of these things have meaningful nutrition in them. All of them are long chains of starch, which break down into sugar. Back to, back to step number one. So get rid of all the grains. There's nothing in grains that you need as far as nutrition goes. They just increase your blood sugar, increase your insulin level, and increase levels of chronic inappropriate inflammation in your body. Step number three is to eliminate all vegetable seed oils from your diet. Margarine vegetables, shortening plant-based butter, <laughs> canola oil, soybean oil, peanut oil, uh, safflower oil, sunflower oil, all of these oils are very high in omega-6 fatty acids and tend to cause chronic inappropriate inflammation in your body. Step number four is to eat within an eight hour feeding window. So you're gonna not eat for 16 hours out of the day. And then during that eight hour window, you can have one meal, two meals, three meals during your eight hour feeding window. This gives your body a 16 hour opportunity to lower your blood sugar and lower your insulin level. And hyperinsulinemia is one of the, the, the hallmark cardinal markers for metabolic syndrome. And then step five is to add lots of fatty red meat or fatty seafood and eggs with the yolk into your diet. The healthy fat and the healthy protein in these things are gonna help you reach satiety, that sensation of fullness. So you're gonna be full for a long time. That's gonna make it much easier not to eat for that 16 hours each day because you're full of fat and protein. You don't need to snack all the time. Now I've included several links to research down in the show notes if you don't believe what I just said or if you're having trouble convincing your doctor, then you can print out these research studies, read them yourself, take them to your doctor or give a copy to your mama if she keeps uh, nagging at you. Also, I've got many other videos on this YouTube channel about metabolic syndrome and about hypertension and about high triglycerides and about fatty liver and about PCOS and about well, I've got over 600 videos on this channel. So I'm begging you, pretty please, find out if you have metabolic syndrome by using the diagnostic criteria I talked about earlier. And then number two, please reverse your metabolic syndrome so you can live a long, healthy, vigorous, vibrant, virile life without all of the disastrous complications that go along with metabolic syndrome, whether it's diagnosed or not. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.